It, it was a, well, beautiful old theater because it was, uh, you know, uh, built in the uh, early part of our history and built originally as a theater, as a, as a large space. The uh, seating was uh, wood-backed, as I remember, and there was a bit of a rake or an angle uh, in the auditorium. The stage uh, had, as I said, it w there was a main stage in the middle and then two side stages on left and right, so with separate curtain areas so they could be opened and you could have separate performances. That was kind of neat. The ceiling in the main auditorium had been lowered two or three times over the years, probably as an energy-saving device. And uh, so when I was there, uh, or uh, when I arrived, it had been lowered to standard, what we would consider today standard height, and had acoustical tile on the ceiling. But a couple of times I was able to climb up into the original, uh, the rafters, and see the original woodwork, which was magnificent, huge arches and very fancy and, and nicely uh, carved uh, woodwork. It was beautiful. One of the interesting features, you asked about interesting features, uh, were the bats that lived in the administration building. And you would see those not only uh, at night, but sometimes in the early evening. We did do some rehearsals in there. We did not perform on the large auditorium stage uh, that year because we were doing some renovation. At the time of the fire, they were putting in a very large revolving platform in the middle of the stage as well as some other renovation. And so because of that major construction, it was unable to be used and we were performing both in the studio theater, the basement theater, as well as Charles Johnson Theater, which was operating then also at the time. Oh, back to my bat story. We did rehearse sometimes on the stage uh, of the Dear Wester. And the first time I was rehearsing there, I was brand new and, and uh, we were rehearsing a, a show called A Flea in Her Ear. And uh, in the middle of rehearsal, the students jumped off of the, the stage and squatted down in front of it, below the seats, and I didn't know what was going on. And they, of course, were used to this, and they called out something about a bat attack, and sure enough, dozens of bats came flying out from above the stage, the, wing, the uh, fly space, out into the auditorium and found some hole that they knew about and, and left, went out for the night. Uh, I was shocked, but, <laughs> but I got used to it. Happened several more times while I was there. And then, of course, everyone tells the story about seeing um, the night of the fire, the bats flying out through the flames. Uh, that was kind of more, built actually more as a lecture hall, we should probably say, than as a theater performance space. And so the support areas for sets and props and costumes and lights and that were not as extensive as we would build today in a in a space. And so most of the shop area and equipment and storage was actually all downstairs in the back of this um, studio space, the studio theater space, which had a little stage at the end of it. As most high school gyms nowadays would have a small stage at the end and then two side seating areas. That's what the basement of the administration building was like. Yeah, there were gigantic shades that could be drawn down on those, but still, if you tried to perform in the day, uh, the light came in. In the evening, it wasn't too bad, but you then had street lights and things like that coming in. Uh, so the, the space, uh, as I say, was not really designed as we would design a theater performance space today. And it was used for a number of other things in addition to all of the, the lectures and that's, uh, that, that kind of thing was done in there. It was also used as a space to give uh, large exams, uh, mass exams, for example, all of the, I know the speech students all took their final exam in that building using lap boards. And so I do recall that the back of the auditorium had these huge stacks of uh, lap boards, <laughs> planks of wood that the student would pick up on his or her way to the seat and they'd sit down and maybe take notes during a lecture or take their exams on that and turn them in at the end. I remember going to the theater uh, in the uh, late 1970s to uh, hear a presentation by Colonel Irwin, who was one of the astronauts who landed uh, on the um, 
moon, and he brought to Northwest a, a moon rock, which we still have on display. But I can remember going to the theater with our family um, and just being amazed, waiting for the program to start of how big that old theater was. And um, if it wasn't, it surely seemed like it was three stories high and just massive uh, um, uh, in, in height and lots of space above you. And of course, it, uh, as I remember, it had the wooden seats and had, a, had an old uh, appearance to it, very large stage, high curtains. And here was the astronaut at that point, instead of talking to somebody uh, over a uh, wireless in a space uh, station, we, he was showing his experience using a, a, a 35 millimeter carousel uh, of the pictures. But uh, it was still very impressive. And uh, I'll, I'll not forget those uh, events that I went to in that theater. The thing that I, that I remember about the theater was my office was on third floor and there was a balcony where they did the lighting for the production. Well, that balcony was, you had to go through my office to get to that. So I could go out there on that balcony during work hours, I wasn't supposed to do that probably, and I could watch them practice for their performances and getting ready for things. So it was kind of neat to sit up there on that balcony area. It was big. <laughs> that was, and uh, um, I, the acoustics were really not bad uh, for some a structure that was built in the early part of the century. And uh, we had a lot of, of, of interesting uh, uh, offerings there. Part of the performing arts series, I believe they call it today, uh, speakers and, and that sort of thing, and, and very well attended. So the building uh, served not only those of us who worked here and those of who studied here, but also the community. They attended, as they still do. It's interesting still sometimes, I have to admit, when I go in, you know, I, I think about that and uh, or walk up those main stairs thinking that I'm, uh, I'm still, I, I remember walking up and having the auditorium on the other side.